Hello everyone. So today we are going to talk about three CISM practice questions. Starting with the first one. The question says a global financial institution has suffered a data breach affecting customer records. The chief information security officer or the CISO must communicate the impact and response plan to the board of directors, which is the most effective way for the CISO to report the incidents to the board. Let us see the options. So the first option says, provide a technical analysis of the breach, including affected systems and attack vectors. Option number B, present a high level impact assessment, including regulatory implications and mitigation efforts. Option number C, focus on detailed forensic findings from the security team. And option D, deliver a report on individual employee errors that contributed to the breach. Let us break down each of the answers. Option number A, which says provide a technical analysis of the breach, including affected systems and attack vectors. So in this option, while understanding the technical root cause, is important. The board which the CISO is reporting to, the board doesn't need in-depth technical analysis. Board also focuses on financial, legal and strategic risk, not detailed attack vectors. This information is better suited for CISO discussions with IT and security team, but not high level executives. Option number C. Focus on detailed forensic findings from the security team. In this, forensic analysis, which is more around malware behavior, log analysis, it is useful for technical response teams, but not the board members. The board needs a business-oriented view, not a deep dive into the indicators of compromise, which we call it as IOCs or threat vector tactics. While the forensic details may be relevant for legal team or compliance reporting, and of course, high level summaries are better for the board. Option D is deliver a report on individual employee errors that contributed to the breach. Now, in this option, while the human error is a major factor in breaches, singling out the employees in front of the board is not a productive focus or it's not according to the culture of the organization. The focus should be on systematic issues, then security improvements, and how to prevent future breaches. Instead of blaming each other, individuals, analysts, the CISO should discuss uh, enhanced security training, policy updates, and risk management strategies. Now comes the option B. The correct answer is option B. Reason being, the board of director is primarily concerned with business impact, regulatory compliance, financial implications and risk mitigation rather than technical details. So providing a clear executive summary or executive level summary of the breach is much better for the CISO. Explaining how it impacts the customer, business operation and regulatory obligation is much more important for the CISO. And outlining step taken to mitigate the risk, ongoing response efforts and long-term strategies, that is more important for the CISO. And finally, addressing legal and reputational concerns with a focus on business resilience is more important for the CISO. <clears throat> Since the board focuses on risk management and strategic decisions, this approach ensures that they receive the most relevant and actionable information, which they will work with. Next question, question number two. Question says, a third party vendor that provides cloud storage services for an e-commerce company has experienced a security incident. The audit committee has requested the primary action that the security team lead should take immediately. So what do you think is the most appropriate next step? Options are identify all stored customer data and 
implement a new encryption standard, report the incidents to executive management and begin impact assessment, terminate the vendor contract and move all data in-house, and or conduct a legal review before taking any security action. Let us break the options one by one. The option A, which says identifying all store, stored customer data and implement a new encryption standard. Encryption is important, but it is a long-term preventive measure, not an immediate response. Also, the damage must be assessed first, including whether the vendor already had encryption. Immediate containment and risk evaluation takes precedence over implementing any new encryption policies. Option C. Terminate the vendor contract and move all data in-house. Now, contract termination is a very drastic step that should not be taken without full impact assessment. Moving the data in-house is time-consuming, costly and impractical as an immediate response, which needs to be fast-tracked. The focus should be on working with the vendor to contain the breach and implement security measures. Termination may be an option only after assessing that the vendor liability and security failures are actually there. Option D says conduct a legal review before taking any security action. Legal review is important, but security response should not be delayed. Otherwise, the damage may spread. Immediate actions like containment, risk assessment and communication with the vendor should happen concurrently with legal consultation. Delayed security action could worsen the breach impact and violate regulatory requirements. Now come to the answer. The correct answer is option B. Report the incident to executive management and begin impact assessment. Why? The primary action after security incident should be to escalate the issue to executive management and immediately assess the impact. The organization has a coordinated response involving security, legal, compliance and business teams or not. This has to be ensured. Then also ensure the extent of data exposure and potential business impact. It has to be understood. Also, regulatory and contractual reporting obligations are met has to be ensured. And finally, the company can work with the vendor to investigate and mitigate the incident has to be ensured. So impact assessment is crucial for deciding on further remediation steps, legal implications and customer notification if required. Question number three. A multinational enterprise is implementing a new governance framework to comply with global data protection regulation. The CISO is responsible for ensuring that compliance efforts prioritize the areas with the highest risk exposure. Question is, which area should be prioritized first? Options are identify and secure all personally identifiable information, that is PII, storage locations. Option B, train employees on general cybersecurity best practices. Option C, enhance physical security measures in office location. And option D, implement new cybersecurity policies for all departments at once. Let's start with option number B. Train employee on general cybersecurity best practices. Training is important, but not the first priority in regulatory compliance. While human error contributes to breaches, the immediate risk is unprotected PII. Training should be a part of overall compliance strategy after securing high-risk assets like the PII. Option C, enhance physical security measures in office locations. While physical security matters, compliance efforts are more focused on data security and privacy risk. Most data breaches occurs through cyber attacks, not physical theft. Strengthening the logical security like encryption, access control audits is more critical than physical office security. Option number D, implement new cybersecurity policies for all departments at once. A blanket policy rollout without a risk-based approach is inefficient. Compliance should be phased, focusing on high-risk area first, not 
a one size fits all strategy writing these policies without addressing real risks like pii ex exposure does not ensure compliance or reduce regulatory risk now let's talk about the answer the correct answer is answer a identify and secure all pii storage locations the global data protection regulation focus heavily on protection of personally identifiable information pii is the highest risk asset because its exposure can lead to regulatory fines lawsuits and reputational damage identifying where pii is stored helps in implementing proper encryption access control and data retention policies many global regulation mandate the data protection and breach notification so securing the pii storage is the first and crucial step in compliance efforts since compliance efforts should prioritize the high risk areas securing the pii storage is the most effective way to reduce immediate legal and financial risks that brings us to the end thank you everyone